Good afternoon, and welcome to our daily COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. I'm Steve Trifletti, your Plymouth Town moderator, and we're here this week, each day, Monday through Thursday at noon for this update, which is number 47, coming to you live on Monday, May 18th, 2020 at 12 noon. This forum is being brought to you live by PAC TV on Comcast channels 13 and 15, Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on PAC TV's streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. For questions during today's forum, please email PlymouthInfo at pactv.org. These forums can also be replayed at pactv.org slash Plymouth. Today's participants joining Ken Tavares and me include Plymouth State Representative Kathleen Lenatra, also Matthew McDonough. He is the Plymouth County Register of Probate. Dr. Gary Maestas, the Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. Sarah Cloud, the Director of Behavioral Health and Social Work at Beth Israel Deaconess in Plymouth. Father John Collidy, he is with the St. Joseph's and St. Mary's Collaborative. Amy Naples is the Executive Director the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And we're going to begin today with the chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Tavares. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Steve, and good afternoon to everyone. Uh, a couple of very quick announcements, and that is don't forget to vote tomorrow. The election to fill the vacant Senate seat in our district uh, uh, is tomorrow. The polls open at uh, 7 and close at 8. Um, also, uh, I want to remind everyone that the Board of Selectmen will be meeting on uh, Wednesday at 5 o'clock on PAC TV. Uh, we will have just two items on the, uh, the docket. One will be to discuss parking at Whitehorse Beach, and the other is to review the guidelines uh, for the other various beaches and recreation areas so that before we start the holiday weekend, people will have up-to-date information. It will be an important meeting uh, to take in uh, this week, again, Wednesday at 5 p.m. Thank you, Steve. Leckman Chair Kenneth Tavares, he'll be here with all of our participants. You can email questions to our panel <coughs> at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. On Friday, we received a letter from the Supreme Judicial Court, and in that letter, the judiciary advised us that courthouses in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will likely remain closed throughout the month of June and may begin a phased reopening during the summer. And here to tell us an update today is our Plymouth County Register of Probate, Matthew McDonough. Welcome, Matt. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me on the show, and thank you for continuing to share all this information with the people in Plymouth and around Plymouth County. As you said, we did receive a letter from our Supreme Judicial Court last week, and it was a letter filled with optimism. Um, we've had a very difficult time in the last few months trying to maintain access to justice while making sure that we keep people safe at all times. So one uh, particular fact from that letter that really struck me was the fact that we normally have 40,000 people who come through our trial court buildings every single day. And since our emergency status has begun in March, we've had to find new ways and new ways to embrace technology to make sure that the emergency matters that those folks have are heard on a daily basis. While we have publicly been saying that the courts are closed to the public, um, what they really are are closed to foot traffic at this point. So in the Plymouth County Probate and Family Court, we've been handling emergency matters all the way up until May 4th exclusively uh, using a system where we have a judge who's on, on call working with a case manager and doing our telephonic hearings and working through the registry with litigants, uh, sometimes by phone, sometimes they come to the front door of the court and we work with them remotely through cell phones. Uh, basically, we've been reinventing the way that we help people in the court system. Moving forward, however, we know that this is something, uh, a system that we're going to have to keep in place for some time. We're going to be slowly progressing towards having more public access to the buildings. Uh, that probably won't occur until later in the summer. Uh, the letter from the SJC makes clear that uh, June is probably not a time where we're going to be opening our doors to foot traffic from the public. We will continue to be handling emergency matters in our court. That includes restraining orders, 209A orders, as they're called do not resuscitate orders, our temporary guardianship issues. Um, but we've also expanded some of our services to handle matters that are considered to be non-emergencies. 
We're going to be following your example, and we've obtained Zoom licenses for our judges and our, our clerks to work with to hold hearings remotely, uh, while also being able to record them to make sure that we're keeping records of all of our court proceedings. So it definitely is uh, an interesting time to be working in the trial court. We're doing everything we can to make sure that we catch every emergency that comes through, and we do what we can with our limited staffing capacities right now to make sure that we expand our non-emergency cases as well. Um, as you may have heard last week, we did have a closure in our Brockton Trial Court building. Today, the Brockton Trial Court building on Main Street in Brockton is closed for a deep cleaning. We had a member, uh, a colleague within the building who tested positive for COVID-19, um, and we are planning on reopening the building tomorrow. So if anybody is looking for questions from the registry of the probate and family court, uh, I would ask them to call our Plymouth office today at 508-747-6240 and we'll be reopening our doors tomorrow. Uh, um, as for uh, other issues, I'm always available to answer questions. If anybody has any questions for me or for the trial courts, uh, my direct line at my office is 508-747-8510. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you, and that is Plymouth County Register of Probate, Matthew McDonough, who has joined us once again. He'll be here to answer your questions. Email us at plymouthinfo at pactv.org. And at this time, we welcome back Dr. Gary Maestas. He is the superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. Welcome, Gary. Thank you for having me again, Steve. So let me give you an update on what's happening in the schools. I think the uh, biggest piece that we have going on is that we are in uh, our online learning mode. And it's hard to believe that we are in uh, middle of June and excuse me, middle, middle of May, and we're planning on our, our June uh, exit of school, which has gone by, some people have thought it's gone by really slow, but um, it seems like the days just keep moving very quickly. Uh, our teachers are doing a fantastic job of uh, offering an online education to our students. It is an unbelievable challenge, and my, my thoughts, uh, my, my heart goes out to our families out there just dealing with um, having all these responsibilities and also trying to engage their, their kids to get online and, and do their work. So it's been very challenging in that aspect. One of the things that has been uh, very uh, encouraging is uh, we're coming on graduation season and May is the busiest time of the year for uh, pre preparation or graduation. You know, we have um, uh, uh, calendars going out tomorrow that will list all the senior activities and awards. We're doing virtual awards all the way from elementary, middle, and high school. And we're also doing a, um, a, a graduation ceremony on June 6th that will uh, be a special event for our seniors. We're gonna try to do everything we possibly can to uh, make this a, a very nice exit for our seniors. So the, you know, the, the middle of, of uh, May to the middle of, of June are extremely busy in school systems and it hasn't changed even though there's a pandemic uh, out there. Maestas, he is the superintendent of schools for the Plymouth Public Schools. This time on a Monday, we welcome back Sarah Cloud. Sarah is the director of social work and behavioral health at the Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth campus. Welcome, Sarah. What do you have for us today? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Happy Monday, everybody. Mm -hmm. I know this is a very important Monday. Um, and... Um, Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about um, being able to pour from an empty cup. Um, so we're in, we're several months into this pandemic and many of us are finding ourselves treading water. So I think it's a really good time to check in with ourselves and ask how full is our cup right now? So the reference to how full your cup is is a metaphor for making time for self-care. A well-known quote from Eleanor Brown says, when you take time to replenish your spirit, it allows you to serve others from the overflow. You cannot serve from an empty vessel. So I think throughout this pandemic, we've heard the reference pretty regularly that we're in the same boat. And I think um, that's largely untrue. I think we are in the same situation. We're all weathering the same storm. And I think when it comes to self-care, this is no different. I think we find ourselves falling into different categories and in different places when it comes to self-care. Um, some of us fall into the category of having been so busy and overscheduled that the pandemic has actually brought around much needed, although not wanted, downtime. Um, and so I think for folks that fall into that category, asking the question, has this imposed staycation provided us with an opportunity to reconnect with our families? 
and has gifted you time to spend gardening or walking or reading or watching movies? Um, if so, you kind of fall into this category and your glass may be fairly full, even though you're probably very anxious to get back to your routine and your schedule. I think many, many others are feeling pretty stretched during this time um, and are largely from wearing so many different hats. Um, their teachers now, their parents, their employees, their counselors, their caretakers, their coaches, and their worry warriors. Um, and I think it's very easy to fall into a place of feeling very overwhelmed. So a couple of things that can help you determine if your cup is running low or, or drying out. Um, so one is that you're feeling anxious or irritable or even resentful. Um, none of those are fun things to be experiencing. Um, are you having a difficult time getting out of bed or just feeling exhausted throughout the day? Um, are you reluctant to either check email or text messages or even pick up phone calls? So the kind of that feeling of wanting to be alone and seeking out some solitude. Um, are you just not, uh, or you, are you not, um, are you overeating or not really eating well or taking care of yourself? So those are all can be some signs that um, our, our cup is low and we need to kind of refill and take care of ourselves. So ways to do that um, is to really understand and appreciate your limits. It is entirely okay to say no. Um, making time for yourself, even if you can take five or 10 minutes here and there throughout the day, I know it's incredibly difficult when we're wearing all these different hats, but it will make a huge difference. Make yourself a cup of tea, um, join a virtual yoga. Um, there's a lot of really great um, apps for free that you can download to take a five or 10 minute, um, you know, guided meditation or, you know, I think there's a lot of different things we can just take a really quick break. Um, laughing is so underrated. I think the more you can watch a, a funny clip or a funny movie, depending on how much time you have, <coughs> or call a girlfriend that, um, you know, makes you laugh and highly recommend that. And, um, just take that time to disconnect for yourself and um, really getting in a habit of checking how full your cup is and taking care of it and attending to that will make a huge difference, um, both for how you feel throughout the day and then what you're able to give to others. Um, so we need to take care of ourselves first. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Sarah Cloud. And she is with the Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth Campus. She'll be here with the rest of the panel to answer your questions. Please email us at PlymouthInfo at PACTV. These daily updates are date stamped in the top right-hand corner. And today you'll see that it's coming to you live on Monday, May 18th. The reason why we provide these updates is to provide you with verified information from elected officials and experts in fields that are responding to the COVID-19. At this time, we welcome back Father John Colody from the St. Joseph's and St. Mary's Collaborative. Welcome, Father John. Good afternoon, everyone. It's very nice to be with you once again. Um, I guess I'm one of these uh, good news, bad news people. Um, obviously, for uh, churches and houses of worship, it's been a very challenging time since we have not been able to have uh, services now for many, many weeks. I know a lot of people miss that uh, fellowship that goes along with, with worship. But, um, and you do notice sometimes too, people's uh, uh, on edge a bit, uh, people's nerves getting a bit frayed because the uncertainty of when all things are going to uh, ease up a bit. Uh, but the good news I think in that is the fact that even though we have not been able to have uh, regular services, uh, and most churches don't uh, sit on a very large endowment, uh, despite that, uh, people have been very, very supportive. And I think especially of the fact that you know, homelessness continues in an epidemic. Um, poverty continues in an epidemic. Uh, stress continues in an epidemic. And people have been very, very generous and kind in their support. I know um, many churches and houses of worship have been providing help with meals, with uh, other services, rents, uh, bills that pile up if you're unemployed. Um, we have some of our younger uh, congregants uh, calling older people just to check in to see if uh, if there's anything that they they truly need. So, um, you know, the other day, I just saw an envelope, but someone dropped off at the, the rector, just said, for the poor, you know, kind of do whatever you need to do uh, to help people out that are, are struggling a bit. So in one way, I hope that experience of fellowship and caring and watching out for one another is something that doesn't stop once the, uh, the restrictions ease up a bit. 
The second thing I guess I would mention is that uh, in light of uh, the governor's uh, talk today, uh, churches will be in what we call phase one of the reopening. Um, one thing that I know had been discussed quite a bit is the fact that different uh, houses of worship and churches have different capacities. Uh, for example, the uh, cathedral in Boston uh, seats 2,000 people. Now, some other churches seat maybe 100, 150 people. So instead of saying a hard and fast number, I think they've asked us to limit the numbers to 40%. So that would mean a lot of restructuring of, of the church space. Um, it's not a light switch. It's not like we're going to flip the light switch on and all of a sudden uh, next Sunday uh, churches or next uh, Friday night synagogues are going to open up for business like they did before. We're going to have to have some restrictions. Uh, church services are going to look a little different than what we've been used to in the past. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, to figure out spacing, uh, to safety, uh, to limit the numbers. And we're working on that. Uh, we have a big, uh, certainly for the Archdiocese of Boston, a webinar on Tuesday in light of the governor's announcements to try to help us to understand what are the best practices that we can put in place to make sure that we can begin to open up, but also that we can provide a very safe uh, worship experience for the people that, that come to our doors. So um, I hope that that's good news. I hope that that's the news that a lot of people are waiting for. And I just hope that we can successfully uh, negotiate our way through these different phases so that we can continue to move forward rather than, as the governor said, take uh, one step forward and two steps back. So we'll be working on that, I'm sure, uh, as cooperative as we can with the other places of worship uh, here in the Plymouth area, we'll be working together to ensure best practices. Thank you. Thank you, and that's Father John Cullity, and he is with the St. Mary St. Joseph's Collaborative, and he and the other members of the panel can answer your questions. Plymouth info at pactv.org. We welcome back on Mondays, Amy Naples. She's the Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Amy. Steve, great to see you. Happy Monday. Nice to see all of our panelists today as well. Um, I'm sure you were all watching just before this show. Um, Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito announced phase one of reopening in Massachusetts that will al allow hair salons, barbershops, thank goodness, um, construction, manufacturing, worship, retail fulfillment, and curbside to reopen May 25th. While we're waiting for others to reopen, we're certainly working um, in the right direction, and, and we know that it will be coming very soon. We all just have to be patient with that. Um, in regards to that, there will be many webinars um, with our economic development partners this week to help businesses understand the phased approach in the industry guidance. So we will be sharing those important webinars our emails and our Facebook page. So certainly be sure to follow us on Facebook for those very important webinars. Um, the Plymouth Recovery Task Force will be working hand in hand to support businesses during this reopening phases. Our task force is working diligently on a playbook in accordance of the phase guidelines per industry. Our task force is ident identifying opportunities that will impact our businesses effectively. However, as I've said before, there is just no one size fits all solution. Um, that's why we've broken up the task force into smaller working groups to um, help identify and work through the unique challenges per industry. And while many industries won't be opening up for weeks, businesses can get working on the mandatory safety standards and how to meet those standards. Businesses are expected to implement these before reopening. So it's certainly important for businesses to start working on those. There are um, very helpful templates that can be found um, on mass.gov uh, forward slash reopening. That website page is very helpful for identifying those standards and what you can do as a business owner to um, get working towards reopening. And since I just watched the governor's press conference right before this, um, I hope to have more information on the show and our Plymouth Recovery Task Force will be meeting to work through the guidelines and, um, of course, provide clear communication to our small businesses and nonprofits. Um, we will be continuing to do just that throughout the summer. Um, but this group of people is so committed to our community, and we are working together very hard to assist and identify opportunities for businesses, despite the barriers and the guidelines. 
Um, lastly, I did want to mention that the Chamber is hosting a webinar on Friday morning at 10 a.m. titled The Dirty Little Secrets of Cash Flow, which will discuss how to manage available cash on hand for your business. Now more than ever, cash is king. So certainly jump on. Um, you do not have to be a member to join the webinar. So certainly take advantage of that. And of course, you can follow all of the Chamber's happenings, updates, important information on our website, PlymouthChamber.com, and through our social media platforms, our handle is Plymouth Area Chamber. So thank you, Steve, for allowing me to provide the business update. Thank you, Amy Naples, Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. You can send questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And now for our state opening statement. Today, we welcome back Kathleen Lenatra. Kathleen is the Plymouth State Representative for North Plymouth and West Plymouth. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Steve. Nice to be here on Monday morning. I know many of you are anxiously awaiting to hear what the governor was going to say today. Phase one has um, been announced, as Amy had said, and the phase one of the reopening plan keeps in place the existing restrictions, advisories, and guidance, but provides exceptions for certain activities that can resume safely. So what can an individual do? You know, a new stay safer at home advisory requests that individuals stay at home when they can, like they were before. The safer at home advisory is not enforceable. However, all individuals are required to wear a face covering in most places when outside of home. The requirement to wear a face covering is enforceable by the local board of health. So there is an actual fine to that. The mandatory rules outlined the local board of health through the insurance the issuance of the civil fine can be up to $300 of a violation. Amy did mention that the opening of May 18th, the essential businesses that were already opening, were already operating, must still self-certify and complying with the applicable standards by May 25th or July 1st, depending on who you are. Manufacturing will be allowed to open, construction, retail, curbside pickup only, places of worship, which the father had mentioned, with a 40% occupancy limit, and firearms retailers and shooting ranges. On May 25th, we have laboratories and life sciences facilities. Offices are going to be limited to 25% maximum occupancy, except for Boston. Car washes, exterior, and self-service only. Hair salons, thank goodness. Barbershops by appointment only. And pet grooming. Um, curbside drop-off and pickup, and certain outdoor race, uh, recreational facilities and activities. So all this can be found, as Amy had mentioned, on mass.gov forward slash reopenings. And that is phase one. And in phase two, people are all wondering what phase they're going to be in. You can find that out online, and I can mention a few of those in the closing statements. In Lenatra, she is a state representative in the town of Plymouth, and she's available to answer your questions. Uh, email us at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And at this time, we're going to be looking to tomorrow's lineup. Uh, we hope you'll continue to join us. Each Tuesday, we have Christopher Smalley, and he is the Senior Director of Marketing at Beth Israel Deaconess. We also welcome back Ann Dunn. She is the Director of Assessing for the Town of Plymouth. Dr. Barry Potfin. He is an epidemiologist and also a retired professor from Yeshiva University Department of Biology. Also, Michelle Brady, she is the Director of Elder Affairs for the Plymouth Center Active Living. Stephen Cole, he is the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation and will be joined once again by Matthew Muratori, and he is a Plymouth State Representative. And at this time, each day, we also go back through our panel because each of our members participating today have had a chance to listen to each other, and we'd like to ask them for any other additional thoughts that they'd like our viewers uh, to remember. We're going to begin with our first guest, uh, Matthew McDonough, Plymouth County Register of Probate. Uh, Matt, you gave us some information regarding the probate court and the reopening, and this is true generally for all the courts in the Commonwealth. That's correct, Steve. Uh, the letter came from the SJC last week, which, as you know, it runs the entire trial courts, uh, all 6,500 employees in all of our 100-plus buildings, and, and helps us serve over 40,000 people a day. 
Um, so although I just represent the probate and family court, I'm definitely sharing the message on behalf of the entire trial court that everything is being done to make sure that we cover our emergencies, we expand our services and types of cases that we're covering on a daily basis, and that we do it in a way that respects people um, and make sure that we're timely and administering access to justice. Thank you. And that's Matthew McDonough. He is from the Plymouth County Register of Probate. And we're now going to go back to Dr. Gary Maestas, Plymouth Superintendent of Schools. Dr. Maestas. And if you could unmute I yourself. Unmute. I have to unmute myself. Yes. Um, so one thing that I, I want to communicate to our families, um, we will be having um, opportunities for students and teachers to enter their respective buildings um, in June. So we're going to be sending out a calendar to everyone that will identify when students can go in and clean their desks out, clean their lockers out, take home all that information. We're also looking at uh, any materials that students need to have for summer work. Uh, we'll get that available to students, but that's something that we want our families to look forward to. It'll be a calendar um, and it'll uh, be specific by school. So if you go to one school um, that is a smaller population, it'll, it'll, it'll be a little quicker than some of the larger schools that we have. We're gonna exercise social distancing measures. We'll have uh, masks and, and gloves available, but we'll have limited amount of students and people in buildings. Um, and that will be something that will uh, send information out. And uh, just one note, Steve, I, I just want our community to know that, uh, you know, we're still under very strict guidelines on what we can and can't do. And uh, these are for a reason. You know, we, we start taking a look at, uh, at graduation. Uh, our graduation is not optimal. It is not what everyone envisioned um, years and years ago. This is the, the 2020 class. This is the class that most of them were born in 9-11. So they started, they came into this world uh, with uh, difficulty and they are graduating in, in difficulty. But I have told them time and time again that uh, they are resilient, they are strong, and we get through things. We do it together. Um, and the end of the school year for this senior class, we want it to be as special as we can possibly make it under the parameters that we have. And one last thing, as um, we talk about graduation, you know, we have students that are here in the Plymouth Public Schools that leave to the military. Uh, they, they leave to colleges around the world. And, uh, you know, there's talk out there and, and, and uh, about, you know, trying to delay graduation, hold it, you know. I've even had people suggest to me that we have it next school year and, uh, at, you know, have double graduations. Uh, the, 20, the, 20, uh, the, the 20 class and, 20, and the 21 class back to back, you know. But there's a lot of thoughts out there. We can only do what we can do. And um, I just want to thank you, uh, Steve, for allowing me to share information with our community. And hopefully we can, uh, you know, work together as we uh, begin to phase how we re-enter life as, as we know it uh, moving forward. Thank you. And that's Dr. Gary Maestas. He's the superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools. We're now going to go to a question uh, first to Kenneth Tavares, who is the chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. And Ken, a viewer writes, is the Board of Health or the Health Department going to be responsible for helping businesses who need to certify compliance for opening? Uh, Ken, uh, are you able to respond to that? Uh, I do not have a definitive answer because I heard that just before we came on uh, to do this afternoon program, and it's one of the questions that I would have, and of course we want to talk to the Board of Health. Uh, I can tell you that what we will do is follow as closely as possible all of the guidelines that have been laid out by the governor and the lieutenant governor uh, today. So if they have a specific question, uh, uh, the person that called it in, they could send it to us and we will get an answer. Kenneth Tavares is the chair of the Plymouth Board of Selectmen. Tomorrow we welcome back Dr. Barry Potvin, who is the vice chair of the Board of Health and also available to answer questions specific to the Board of Health. Today's guidance to municipalities on enforcing COVID-19 orders states that all operating businesses must comply with general mandatory workplace safety standards, as well as sector-specific 
workplace standards and protocols where applicable. We'll be getting more information uh, for our viewers. And at this time, we're going to move on and back to Sarah Cloud from Beth Israel Deaconess. Sarah, what would be a takeaway today you want our viewers to remember? Yeah, I'd really like viewers to remember that you can't pour from an empty cup. Quite simply, you can't give what you don't have. Um, and prioritizing self-care often feels like an indulgence. And I'd really like to challenge viewers to start thinking about it as a necessity. So if it helps, think of it this way. So when we're, we're before we're a flight is taking off, um, and you get that pre-flight instruction about if, the, if there's an, in the event of an emergency, your face mask drops from the ceiling, they're very, very clear with you that you have to put your face mask on first and then help others. And the same applies here. Self-care is about self-preservation. It's not selfishness. So I really encourage folks to take care of themselves first, and then we can be able to extend um, care to others around us that we love so much as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Sarah Cloud is the Director of Behavioral mm -hmm. Health and Social Work at Beth Israel Deaconess Plymouth. She's here for our daily health component, good words to remember and live by. And also today we welcome back Father John Colladi. Father John, what do you have for us to remember today? I think the watchword is patience because, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the fact that houses of worship can open up for services as of today it's going to be quite different than what a lot of us are used to. It's not going to be that light switch on and off. So I think it's important to be patient. Uh, a lot of things have to be put into place. Uh, we probably will have some missteps, but we'll try to do the best we can to ensure uh, the safety of the people that come uh, to worship with us. I think Sarah mentioned um, the importance sometimes in dark moments of a um, having a bit of humor, um, I mentioned the last time I was on that uh, we try at the end of uh, our services to maybe provide something to uh, make people uh, chuckle as they leave uh, church and resume their week. Uh, I think I told that story about the little mice in heaven. Um, I think one lady wrote in and said she liked the joke. I think a lot of other people said, don't bother, but here I go. Uh, there's a story about this uh, married couple who lived in Minnesota and it had been a terribly cold winter in Minnesota. So they decided that they would take a trip to Florida and they would stay at the same hotel they had honeymooned at 40 years previously. Well, unfortunately, they couldn't get on the same flight, so the husband flew down the day before. When he arrived at the, uh, the hotel, he saw a computer, so he decided he would send a message to his wife. But unfortunately, um, he missed her address by one letter. So instead of his email going to his wife in Minnesota, he went to a woman in Texas whose husband had recently died. In fact, she just attended the funeral that morning. So she came back to home and she uh, opened up her computer to see if there was some messages of condolence. And um, instead of the message of condolence, it was the message from the man in Florida. She screamed and fainted on the floor when she opened her computer. So her son ran in to see what was the matter, looked at the computer screen and read the message, which said, my dearest wife, I arrived safely. <laughs> the trip wasn't so bad. We have computers down here now so we can send out messages from time to time. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. P.S. Pack lightly. It's awful hot down here. <laughs> That's all I have. Oh, my. That's, great. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Um, well done, Father. Well thank done. Thank you. Uh, Amy <laughs> Naples, uh, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Now go ahead and top that one. I can't. That was amazing. <laughs> the last time he was on as well, I loved it. Um, that's a tough act to follow. That was very good, Father. Um, I, the message I wanted to leave you all today is um, please know that the Chamber is working hard for our business community. And I am here and my amazing team is here to help in any possible way that we can. Please don't hesitate to reach out if I can be of any assistance at all. If you need advice or if you just need to talk to someone about your business. As a chamber, our mission is to help businesses succeed. And that is what I am committed to do. And I'm committed to help you weather the storm. Um, I'm so thankful for our amazing community, the wonderful leaders we have in town that are working day and night to ensure the safety of everyone. 
as their first and foremost, and of course, for their support to our local businesses. I think Sarah gave such a great message today that really resonated with me, and I think it would resonate with our small business community as well. It's important for us to remember we can't pour from an empty cup, and um, I think that speaks uh, tremendously to all of us that we need to take care of ourselves and we'll get through this together. So thank you, Sarah, for sharing that, and thank you all to all the panelists that are here today, and um, I truly enjoy being a part of it. Thank you, Amy Naples, Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. She'll be back with us on Wednesday as we continue this week, each day, Monday through Thursday. And at this time, we have a statement that could be a question. Uh, and I'm not sure, Kathy, if it's for you, but I'll read the statement. And the viewer writes, there are so many things to think about for business owners and employees. And how would business insurance workers' comp or liability coverage play into all this? And Kathy, we'll just go with your uh, added statement today. Welcome back. Um, thank you, thank you. And thank you for letting me join today. I love all the panels that you have on and I appreciate everything they had to say. Um, business interruption insurance was actually a bill that was filed because business interruption insurance did not cover an act of God, which is this pandemic. So hopefully that will go through and we'll see some businesses recoup a little bit during that. As for um, the other part, um, I'm not sure how that's going to take effect with this, but stay tuned and we can figure that out together. And when I find out more answers, I'll be happy to share them. Thank you. And that's Plymouth Representative Kathleen Linatra. We want to thank all of our members of our panel today uh, joining Ken and me, and they include uh, Matthew McDonough, the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, also Dr. Gary Maestas, the Superintendent of Plymouth Public Schools, Sarah Cloud, the Director of Behavioral Health at Beth Israel Deaconess, Father John Colladie from the St. Joseph's and St. Mary's Collaborative, Amy Naples, Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce, Kathleen Linatra, a Plymouth State Representative. And we're going to go back now to our chair of our Plymouth Board of Selectmen, uh, Kenneth Tavares, for your closing thoughts. Thank you, Steve, and thank you to the panelists today. This was a good group to begin the week with, but especially uh, Father John, thank you for the laugh. And uh, Sarah, thank you uh, for the, uh, the good advice. Uh, uh, now I know what was wrong. The, the cup was empty. Uh, thank you all. And uh, we are going to be taking, uh, I think, the rest of the week to look through the, uh, the governor's uh, information from the press conference. There's a great deal of information that we will all have to be following. And I'm sure we'll be able to answer many more questions in the days to come in regards to how we open up under phase one, which we're all looking forward to. Thank you. Thank you. And that is Kenneth Tavares. He is the Plymouth Board of Selectmen Chairman. And we want to tell viewers that you need to be patient if you're going to the ma.gov uh, slash reopening. Um, we understand that many people are going to it right now. Uh, and we do plan to have much more information for you on tomorrow's update as we review and react and respond to COVID-19 in Plymouth. Tomorrow's panel, by the way, again, uh, Ken Tavares, Matthew Muratori, and I will be joined by Christopher Smalley, and he is the Senior Director of Marketing and Communications at Beth Israel Deaconess in Plymouth. Also, Ann Dunn, she is the Director of Assessing for the Town of Plymouth. Dr. Barry Potvin, he is the Vice Chair of the Plymouth Board of Health and also an epidemiologist. Michelle Brady, she is the Director of Elder Affairs for the Town of Plymouth. And Stephen Cole, he's the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation. Thank you for joining us. I'm Steve Trifletti, Plymouth Town Moderator. Please join us throughout this week, Tuesday through Thursday. Good day.